Why are we just accepting painful periods? Why don't we question? It should not be painful. We should not suffer periods. Okay. <laughs> I would say, first of all, be aware of what your body normally does. Can we please talk about it? This stuff happens every single day. Right. Yeah. That ex... That ex... Whoa. Welcome to The She Word, conversations that women rarely have but really should, and I'm your host, Trudy Kerr. So before we get started down here somewhere, there is a subscribe button. I'm going to get you right now, if you can, just to hit that subscribe because we have some amazing things coming out on The She Word over the next six months. Not only do we have season three, but we also have another season of the Young Women's Edition, Women in Business, and also coming up in the new year, The He Word. So hit that subscribe, follow, like us, stay in touch, and we'll let you know what's going on. And if you are one of our Patreon subscribers watching this before anybody else, well, a very special thank you to you. I know you've been very patient, but we've got some very special stuff coming up for you in the coming weeks and months. And just by being a Patreon subscriber, you're making a difference to the lives of women who need guidance and therapy through our partnership with the Richmond Foundation. 50% of the profits from our Patreon page goes directly to the Richmond Foundation. So the theme for today's show was suggested by one of today's guests. And when she contacted me and said, why don't you have a show on menstruation, on periods, it was a light bulb moment. Yes, because periods will affect every single woman in one way or another and will stay with us for approximately 37 and a half years. That means somewhere around 500 periods. So I can't actually believe we're in season three and we're only just having this conversation. But here we are sitting around a table with three amazing ladies and we're going to be talking about menstruation and periods. So Rebecca, aka Rebecca Lifestyle on Insta, content creator, lifestyle guru, and with an <laughs> eco-friendly mission committed to self-care and loves traveling. But more importantly, Rebecca is a woman, which means, Rebecca, you are already an expert in this field just by being yeah. a woman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. technically, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, every woman goes through this and I feel that we do not talk about it enough. We really need to get back out there and talk about it more often. Absolutely. And that's why we're doing this. So I want to say a massive thank you because you really did make that light bulb moment for me. Audrey Galia Suchet is a woman's health physiotherapist specializing in the pelvic floor, which I have to confess, until I spoke to you in conversation, I didn't even know and still really don't know what the pelvic floor is. So we're going to be okay. talking about that as well. But you work with patients who, aside from other issues, have severe period pains and explains that physio can relieve this and assist with this, which again... Can actually do that. So. I, I'm amazed. Audrey, I'm so glad that you're here and thank you so much for being here because I was just reading about you. I was like, wow. And I'm going to get you to give me a little bit more information about yourself in just a second. And <laughs> Chiara Frendo Balzan is an intensely loved and well-respected obstetrician and gynecologist, I got that word out there, <laughs> specializing in women's health and sexual health. You're already a regular guest on television, at radio and podcast, so this is nothing new for you. You're committed to sharing your knowledge of the female journey. It's so amazing to have you here. We've been talking about this for a really long time. And Kiara, I'm going to stay with you right now. Fill me in on the details about you and what you do. And, and you've obviously, you've also studied abroad. Yes, I, I did all my training in the UK for 11 years. And then I came back and, uh, and now I'm helping the Maltese women and the foreign women, of course, that of course. live in Malta. Um, obviously, it's a different situation. The organization here is different. And I worked in the, in the main hospital here in Malta. Um, but now I do private practice so I can dedicate my time to these women and, uh, and yeah, I, I think it's fab. And periods, oh my goodness, that's like half of my patients, like all the whole clinic, 50% of the time I'm talking about periods. So 
to me not talking about periods. I'm like, really? What? Well, we're going to come to this and why we do and don't talk about periods in a second. And I'm also just going to add to that. I absolutely love your accent, which is from a, a part of Wales. We touched on that because we haven't met before, but we've talked quite a number of times. And I'm going to just repeat the fact that you've been recommended to this show so many times because you're very well known and very loved. So thank you for being here. Oh, I really thank you appreciate for having me. Thank off. you. I'm so glad that I'm finally here. I'm too, and I'm so glad we're talking about periods. <laughs> Why not? Rebecca, so I follow you on socials. Uh, we've exchanged. We've I've seen what you're up to. I've seen that you love traveling and that you, you're an Instagram content creator. Yeah. But why, why, why? And as part of the introduction to you, did you say that we should have this topic because it was you that said we should talk about yeah. periods? So um, to be honest, my slogan for the blog is the filterless feed. And in that, it means like literally showing everything, just putting it out there just as it is raw. And through my experience, I just find that we really don't talk about it. And it's a big part of our lives. And we really need to speak about it even more often because I feel that it is still taboo language. So it's something that it is almost shameful for women to speak about and we really need to speak about it more often. It's very important. And this comes up about so many topics that we discuss here on this show, that women don't talk about things that affect so much of their lives. Audrey, I'm pretty sure that I left out some details with yourself, not, not simply because I really need to know what the pelvic floor is, but tell me about you because you're a physiotherapist specializing this area. I've never heard of that before. In fact, that is something that is really common. A lot of people have no idea. When they come for physiotherapy, their idea is either because they've got a back pain or a neck pain, right. or pelvic floor. You know, it, they're just not aware that there are problems. Um, are, are they aware of what it is? Not that much either. No, basically, it's the bottom of your pelvis, which keeps everything together, where you pee and poop, if I may say these words. Oh, we've had much worse. <laughs> yes, you're very welcome to say pee and poop. Okay. Um, uh, and, uh, so it's muscle? It's the muscle that is at the bottom of the pelvis, but also the organs within the pelvis that can give you trouble. So a pelvic health or a women's health physiotherapist is sort of the equivalent of an obzingaini, but in physio. So you're dealing with problems like with yeah. incontinence, pain during intercourse, period pains, as we mentioned, pregnancy. All that comes under women's health, which is extremely vast, extremely vast topic. Super valuable for me as well and my patients. And I work so much like hand in hand with such physiotherapists because I can't do any, everything on my own. And they like the missing link, like a jigsaw puzzle. I Listen, I'm going to, obviously you guys know of each other and know of what you do. Yes. But Rebecca, have you ever come across a physiotherapist before who specializes in the pelvic floor? No. Right. Okay. So at <laughs> least I'm not the, the only one. But in all fairness, many of my patients have not. And when I was in Wales, I used to work in a team like this with a physiotherapist. And then when I came to Malta, it's like... And then it started. So maybe in the last four years or so, I think it's just I think it's really caught on exactly these Recently. last few years. Yes. These yeah, last absolutely. few years. I can't wait to talk about this. <laughs> Before we get into it, I'm going to drop you some statistics. So on average, women will have 450 to 500 periods over their lifetime, which equals 3,500 days spent menstruating. Nice. <laughs> Over 10,000 period products in one lifetime. And of course, each woman is unique. So that number will vary. But understanding your cycle is important since you will have so many cycles throughout your life. Menstrual cycles vary, but on average, there are 13 per year. I guess that makes sense. A woman will menstruate for the equivalent duration of six and a half years of her life. On average, God. women lose between 70 to 100 milliliters of blood during every period. That's approximately four tablespoons. That's correct. <laughs> and this one I particularly love, which I did share before the show, menstrual fluid doesn't have a smell until it's exposed to air. I love this fact. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 
But listen, Malta has a phrase to identify when a young woman has started her period, which is translated, she's fallen down the stairs. Yes. yes. So give yes. that to me in Maltese. What are you Okay, so when we were talking about this in the Women Child Free show, uh, myself and my guest Helen misheard this phrase as it was explained in English, and we thought it said, the cheese has fallen down the stairs. <laughs> so we spent most hey. of the show talking about the cheese falling down the stairs, only to find afterwards that both of us have misheard, and it's actually that she's fallen down the stairs. Yes. Do you know? <laughs> this is a common phrase. I don't think it's used that much. It's, it's not that it's much anymore. Totally. I'll admit. It's I, definitely she's and not cheese. It's, she, it's not yes, like uh, camembert has gone down the stairs. Don't translate that to English. No. Huh? But I remember when I was a kid, and my neighbor, my my neighbor, um, had her first period, and her, her mum came to tell my mum that oh my daughter fell down the stairs. <laughs> How did, how did she hurt herself? <laughs> All the Maltese, of course. Like, and I genuinely thought that my friend had fallen down the stairs. But yeah, apparently. It's but there's a lot like. of phrases that we would use. I mean, um, uh, I, I'm trying to think of some, but you know, the the the, the, the he's come to call um, English phrases that we might use that yeah. refer the painters are in um, these sorts of things and anything that we can come up with to cover up. A, an open dialogue yeah. because there's a lot of a lot of embarrassment. Mm. Is that why we don't talk about periods? Why, if this is so prevalent in our lives and it's going to happen to practically every woman one way or another, why don't we talk about it? Why do we have to hide the yeah. phrases that we use? Mm. Why don't we say, you know what, this is a period, this is your pelvic floor, this is what's happening down there, this is other issues, you know, like like non-smelling menstrual blood. Why do we have to hide it? Why can we not have more open conversations? Or am I just talking to the wrong people? No, 100%. Like, I remember when I first started learning about everything, I remember it was like, oh, hush, hush, like, don't talk about it talk so in the open. It was always about still is. Because whenever I speak to my family members, it's always like, I get the side eye. And I'm like, oh, what's wrong with that? Like, it happens to every woman. It's not a secret. It's out there. It's not something to be ashamed of. What's the problem? It's still happening. So that for me, obviously, it is a disappointment because when there is so much to learn about, like, why do we keep it all hush hush? I think it's hmm. more the fact that we don't know what's happening with our body. We're really not aware of, of what it means. You know, you have your monthly cycle and you're not aware if these symptoms are normal. Like, like a lot of people just accept that pain is normal every single month mm. and they just grin and bear it. And then coupled with maybe family members telling you, oh, get on with it. You know, it's just your period. And how come you need to take sick leave and you're feeling so unwell and you have to miss school? And you don't get the support you need. This is... I this is interesting. I think from the psychological point of view, um, because are we made, are we told that we shouldn't talk about this because of boys, because of men? But I remember a, a specific um, moment when I had a, a couple in my clinic and and he was answering all the questions relating to her period, like when she was on, because for men it's important to know when they're... Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay. They have an investment there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So and they they're not afraid to speak about it. So why are we? Mm. Why are we not talking about this? What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles, and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. Oh, my. 
See, this comes back, it reminds me of the conversation we had in the last show about menopause, which is about shame and women being ashamed of our bodies and some of the, the, the bodily functions that we have. But bearing in mind that they've happened since the beginning of time and without periods, nobody would exist. Exactly. Literally, nobody would be on the planet. Because if you turn it around, a period is what uh, is just a is a is a an indication that, that you're a woman and that you would be able to, hopefully, to, to have a child. But you just said there's not enough information that's out there relating to periods. I'm asking you what the pelvic floor is, and maybe there's a lot of women watching this going, truth, what, you didn't know what the pelvic floor is? But you yourself have said that there's there's not enough information out there. What are the symptoms of a period? What What is actually, I'm going to ask you guys, what is actually happening? To explain to me what is happening and what are the symptoms that we feel? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So as you rightly said earlier, a period is only there for to make babies, right? So the period is actually the lining of the uterus that thickens in preparation for pregnancy. So when the egg comes off, so there's ovulation and expecting it to be fertilized, then there's this nice cushion. But if there's no fertilization, the egg is lost and the period comes because the lining is shed. So that happens every month that the woman is not pregnant, okay? So that's what periods are. The lining of the uterus is shed, that's it. And it happens every 28 days, as you said, so that makes it 13 times a month. Yeah. And obviously we go through hormonal changes. We've got this hormonal surges with ovulation when, when the egg is released, and then there's a decline in those hormones, and that's when we feel the PMS. Is there a medical reason of why, you know, is there a benefit to having those that hormonal surge? Is there a, is your body sending a message? No, it's just a not. pain in the ass. Uh, the, no, it's only there for getting pregnant. Okay. So stopping periods, hormonal control of periods, not having periods is okay as well. Okay, but there's not the, your body's not getting you grumpy on purpose for any particular reason. It's just a side effect of having. Correct, exactly. It's our reaction to that decline in hormones. That's that's what it is. Okay. That's what PMS is. So, Rebecca, I'm going to ask you, what symptoms of your periods have you experienced? Because then I'm going to come to Audrey and ask to give me a, an idea of the range of symptoms that women experience. So, um, I'm completely different to my family. Like, to the rest of my female family members, completely different. Yes. So... <laughs> Basically, my cycle didn't regularize until like one and a half years ago. Yes. And the rest of my family all had it regular. They're fine. So you're like, they were always asking me, but is it true? Is it real? But maybe, 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 maybe all the maybes, but I never really understood why. And I always felt like a fish out of water. Like the rest of my family is having everything normally, if we can say that. And I'm the only one like this what's going on i get a lot of pain in the first couple of days like to the point that sometimes i literally stayed home i still do and just bed rest because honestly i get a lot of pain i get the worst of swings in the freaking universe i get so pissed off like i go from zero to hundred or else i'm just completely quiet so it literally varies from one cycle to the next. And I was so completely different from the rest of my family, especially my mom, for example, or my grandmother from my mother's side, that when I was comparing notes, so to say, I just felt like I'm an alien. Literally felt like I'm an alien. But do you experience any of the other, now that your, your periods have regularized, do you experience any of the other kind of typical eating chocolate, uh, you know, what are, what are the things? The cravings <clears throat> and that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> always. So it it always varies. So it's either savory or sweet. And uh, it goes like full on. Like I'm eating a candy bar for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Like it goes crazy sometimes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I am guilty of that, if you can say guilty. Where's, okay, so I, I want to run through what the symptoms are and why. <laughs> because I, that was a great explanation of what the period is. So what are the symptoms of a period of menstruation? It's the pain. We know the pain. We know the chocolate. It's one of the symptoms, I would say. It's, it's bleeding. Symptoms right. is bleeding. Right? Okay. You bleed. But it should not be painful. We should not suffer periods. It shouldn't be heavy. 
We shouldn't suffer periods. Okay. <laughs> That's so, news so to me. Yes, exactly. So um, this is support, you know, you have to tolerate the pain. No, because we need to find out why you're having pain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back up, back up, back up, <laughs> back up, back up. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> because I, my, when I had periods, particularly when I, my teens and my early twenties and, and then sort of probably towards my late twenties, always hot water bottle, paracetamol, yes. go to bed, not really eating. I never really had the cravings, but always pain. Yeah. So what, what's, that you're telling me that's what? not normal. The excessive pain is Exce- not normal. Excessive pain is not normal. I mean, when you're, oh. when you're building up to get your period. You're going to have these prostaglandins, which are chemicals inside the uterus to help your body shed the, shed the blood if you don't get pregnant. And it's those that make the cramps and make you feel uncomfortable. Because it so, needs to be shed. It needs to exactly. Be and that up. is one of the symptoms, if you'd like to call that. You get the cramping, but they shouldn't be extreme when you have extreme pain, then it needs to be investigated to see yeah. why. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, because you have to distinguish between primary and secondary dysmenorrhea, which is basically pain in your periods. When it's primary, it's not due to any gyne, uh, any other gyne issue, but sometimes it could be because maybe your uterus is slightly tipped, so it cannot empty easily. It could so be when? because of fibroids. I see exactly. that it is news because to us. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back up, back up. Because <laughs> just so pause for a second. Because I want to hear things. what you just said. And, and Be- Becky, Rebecca and I are just I'm looking just at each other. I'm just lost, honestly. Like, <laughs> right. what are we talking about? Because that is the very first time I've ever heard Same. that. Like, ever heard that. And, uh, and fibroids and endometriosis I had. But I just assumed, even for, as a... As a teenager as the period pain we talk about period pain we talk about period pain and and recent studies have said that that some period pain equals a you know is equivalent to a heart attack it's that can be that intense we talk about period pain why you you're saying that's not normal that's not the average no yeah no it's not the average so we should expect some discomfort some discomfort yes so some discomfort is normal you feel like Maybe like, some bowel disturbances, you might yes, be a bit constipated before your period and then you might have some diarrhea after, yep. again, because of these hormones. But you shouldn't be in pain that you have to miss social activities, exactly. going school. out, work, school. Well, that happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's always kind of like medium to high levels of pain. Although once it happened, like it, it was so extreme. Oh my goodness. It was such a big amount. Of, like I can't even describe it. It was excruciating to the point where I couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. I literally couldn't walk. I was like literally holding on for dear life. Like I was taken straight away to the hospital, like from one side to the other. Nobody really had an, uh, like, uh, like an explanation for it. So you can imagine I was absolutely fuming, furious for like being a whole day in hospital, excruciating pain, going to find the results. Uh, we don't really have an explanation for what you're yeah. going through. And I will like, just, I'll just reiterate that because my experience, and we'll, we'll touch on, on these additional complications like endometriosis. I think really pe- people need to be aware of that. Um, you know, Sasha was talking about ovarian cysts and that causing pain at that particular time of the month. But my experience was I, I was undiagnosed with endometriosis for 12 years. I kept going to the doctor. I kept then going, getting rushed into hospital with pain so bad that I was passing out. And I kept getting told I had gas. Mm-hmm. And, and three times, four times I was rushed to hospital Twice I'd passed out, you've got gas. The fourth time they took it seriously, they gave me a laparoscopy. And by then, the endometriosis was everywhere. Now, explain, one of you beautiful ladies, explain what endometriosis is just for a second. And we'll come back to these complications. But just what are the endometrial cells? Because I think that's really important. These are the cells in the lining. Yes. So endometrium is the fancy word, if you want, for lining of the uterus. Okay. Okay. So with endometriosis, the glands that are from the lining are also present outside the uterus, on the ovaries, on the fallopian tubes, on the ligaments, around around the pelvis, on the bowel, 
okay? And also in other places, in the lung, right? So this is real, okay? So those glands are reacting to those hormones every single month. The lining bleeds, bl- blood comes out. Yeah. Those glands are bleeding, but the blood doesn't know where to go. And blood is sticky, okay? On the inside, in our belly, everything moves over each other. Yeah, the, the intestines are loads of long meters. So everything is sliding. So imagine if there's a tiny spot of sticky blood and it sticks with your bowel or the ligament. That is hold, the ligaments are holding the uterus in place because the uterus needs to grow yeah, with pregnancy. So it needs to be held in place by these ligaments. If that is on the ligament, that ligament isn't stretchy anymore. So that also gives pain with intercourse because there's no movement. So imagine someone who's got IBS and has got gas in the bowel and there's a tiny sticky, sticky spot and that's tugging, it's pulling. Right? So this is what endometriosis pain is described as during the cycle and also not during the cycle. So either during periods when it's painful everywhere else and when it's during the rest of the month, usually it's a specific spot and it doesn't move because it's a specific spot. It's not like gas that moves around. Okay, <laughs> And it's notoriously one of the most difficult things to diagnose. This is why people go undiagnosed for a long time. And in the past, laparoscopy was the gold standard. The drawback with laparoscopy is you only see the surface. So when they put the camera through your belly button, all they can see is a surface covering of the organs with ultrasound in the right hands, with advanced scanning and ultrasound. Or MRI, you can see through the layers of the tissue. So there is an old thinking that laparoscopy is the gold standard, we cannot mm. diagnose endometriosis. But the thing is, you can actually map out endometriosis just by ultrasound so that when the surgeon goes in, they know exactly what they're going to find. So coming back to that, if we're talking, I'm going to ask you again, because I think anybody that's watching this like Rebecca and I are just kind of right this moment blown away. And there's so many things that I want to kind of touch on in this show but from you ladies give us a definition again of what a normal menstruation should be like not extreme pain no three days definitely not three days three days a bit of bleeding normal blood flow not yes. too much changing either. maybe two three pads normal uh, the green ones <laughs> the green pads <laughs> not flooding through not flooding no through. Flooding. Think. No flooding. No, because that, that's heavy menstrual bleeding. We haven't even gone, we haven't even touched that subject yet. Well, We're you, the, fl- the, floor, the pelvic floor is all yours. <laughs> <laughs> I have got one, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, there's so much to talk about. I think you need more, se- more, more shows. Oh no, um, we can do that, that's fine. Uh, Rebecca, you started it. <laughs> I opened up the Pandora's yeah. box. Almost. Absolutely. So normal period, what's the normal period? Three days. Every 28 days, um, manageable pain. Most women don't need, not even paracetamol. And they can get on with their life. Yes. And yeah. I, uh, oh. Mm -hmm. So if if someone is experiencing, if there's a woman listening or watching the show and is experiencing pain whereby they regularly have flooding, regularly have to take medication, regularly can't go out and, do the fun stuff they want to do, they need to be getting... Yes, they definitely yes, need to be need seeing advice. a guy yes, need need to see what's happening. Yeah. Then once maybe a diagnosis is made, maybe they've got endometriosis or any other condition, then yes, they can look for help to, to decrease the pain because as Chiara was saying, where the, where the organs are stuck together, that is going to cause pain. So then there are techniques that you can do to loosen these areas of stickiness, mm-hmm. which which can have a lot of benefits. So, for example, if your bowels are stuck to your uterus or whatever, and you need to pass stools and you're always in pain when you need to go to the bathroom or it makes you very constipated, then one of the things you would notice is that you can go to the bathroom much easier. Or if you're having intercourse and it's painful, again, the pelvic floor can be released so that you won't be in pain. This thing about sex, you know, I mean, if there's a couple of 
topics that we don't talk about. Periods is one of them. And pain in sex is definitely that is another something one. Yes, because we shouldn't be, be all helped. enjoying sex, right? It's not painful. It shouldn't be painful. Right. But, but endometriosis, do you know what? It's one question and I tell them, is sex painful? And oh, people don't want to talk about sex. Is sex painful? I just make it plain and clear that it's a normal thing I'm asking about. And they're like, no, no. Is is it painful in one position? Is there one position that you cannot do? And they'd be like, yes, when I put my legs up on his shoulder. There we go. So that's a deep position. And For anyone that didn't quite catch Kiara saying it, <laughs> her, legs, her legs are on his shoulder because you went a little my bit quiet there. My legs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we don't we laying it out on the table, not <laughs> literally, but but, but no. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just vision of us all getting our legs on the table, right? But, but yes, but but that uh, that position is a deep position, so that will push the ligaments even more. So those ligaments that are sticky cannot be pushed, and and doggy is another one. You, it, it, the, I love that. Kiara's actually said doggy. I love that you did come out and say doggy. I'm sorry. Good hats off to you. Brilliant. Well done. Okay. Yeah, this is a first on this show. Um, <laughs> no, but you're right. Right. no, 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 no. <laughs> Stick with doggy because I love that. I love the fact that we're just embracing this topic. Right, but that shouldn't be painful. You're saying that shouldn't be painful. It shouldn't be painful. So, so basically, when I'm told that there is one position and the others are okay, and that position is a deep position, then already in my head it's like the diagnosis is there endometriosis so when i'm doing the scan i'm going to look for signs of endometriosis and yes i can diagnose the endometriosis on the scan and i get this face from my patients as well like yeah that makes sense that makes so much no, sense no it to- it totally makes sense and i'm i'm coming back to you becky rebecca cuz we're looking at each other and uh, we've got both got these done i feel like suddenly that yeah. i my eyes are totally open to a brand new approach to something that I certainly have now passed through. Uh, Bye-bye periods. Um, (laughs) But I passed through that phase, but I wish I had known. I wish I had known that that's not normal. Do you ever have these conversations with your friends? uh, With your friends? Yes, all the time. Like, for example, my cousin, she goes through the exact same thing. So we are the only two in my family that actually go through it. And like, basically, we are the only company that we have. We, we can only talk to each other about these things because we were brought up in a way kind of like, you know, like the tough love kind of thing. And we were always made to think kind of like, OK, this is normal. Just get on with it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I, I remember, goodness, when I was young and I started getting the first signs of like these pains that I couldn't like carry on my life. You know what I mean? But are you faking it just not to go to school? Like wow. checking it out? I get that. Because obviously, like you're young, you get in trouble, all this stuff. But I understand it from the point of view of my caregivers because they never went through it. But at the same time, like, can we please talk about it? This stuff happens every single day. And like sitting here talking with you guys. I'm just in awe because I wish I knew this. Like, I wish I started learning about this stuff because it's happening every single month. And like you said before, women have around 500, bloody hell, sorry, 500 periods. Like when you said that statistic, it just blew my mind. Because for us, like we have to carry on with our lives. Like, honestly, we're superheroes at some point. No, let's get that done. But these ladies, but I mean, I know. Okay, so I'm going to ask you very briefly yeah. because if I'd had this show ten years ago, I most definitely would have come and sought one of you out and and said, "Come on, let's get this sorted out immediately." Even though I'd had endometriosis and even though that had been part of my life, and we're going to come to other complaints from you for, and and uh, what we'd call abnormal conditions uh, and state of the womb in the second. But would, is this going to change? Are you going to go and see, we've got a guy, do you want to make an appointment? Uh, Are you going to go, (laughs) right now, you're going to be inundated. I mean, my whole life, like, I'm not going to say my whole life, obviously, but like, say 10 years, right? And I'm not saying that I get it every single month, this kind of pain, but why should I have to suffer just because I'm made this way? But these two um, amazing ladies are saying that that that's not what you should be feeling anyway. Exactly. And experiencing anyway. So it's been 10 years of just, yeah, get on with it. 
Ladies, look, we've, just, we've touched on endometriosis. We understand now, I understand from both of you, that a normal situation is that you might get a little bit of cramp, you might want to eat the odd chocolate bar, uh, and you might you know, feel a bit fatigued because you are actually bleeding. But what are the, if that's the normal, what are the complications? What are the other complications within our menstrual cycle that, that would create other symptoms that we might be able to relate to? Such as not having a period, for example. And that is something that happens as well. I think a lot of young women need to learn that they need to track what's happening during the month. What is, what is the norm for them and how it's affecting their, uh, their day and their weeks. For example, like in the build-up to your period, usually um, you might be feeling a bit more energetic because your estrogen is going up. So even when it comes to exercise, certain exercise, you're going to be much better at it, like intense exercise. If you're training for a marathon, for example, that's you're at your peak. Once ovulation happens and you the hormones start to change again, then that is when you have to focus on endurance, for example, or exercise that's a bit slower, like Pilates, for example, or if you still want to do energetic exercise, you think of something a bit, you know, not so, not so uh, intense because our bodies are made like that. But in a man's world, we're expected to perform every day. Keep going. Like there is nothing going on. It's the same with our bowels might change throughout the month. Our moods might change a bit throughout the month. Um, the way we react to situations. So if we're aware of it because we've tracked what happens during our cycle, mm. then we can work with it, not against our period. Our period is actually, our menstrual cycle is actually telling us something. It is, you know, a very good indicator of our health and what What's happening in our bodies? I wish I knew that before, like, ages ago. <laughs> because it's the only true. thing that I'm used to, so to say, is like, yeah, that's normal. Keep it moving. It's important, like, <laughs> honestly, just what you said right now, just so that you can plan your life, not around it, but since you are experiencing it, just to know exactly what's going on. To work with it more exactly, than... Exactly, exactly, that's I, it. I wish I'd known because I'd have booked every marathon I've ever run in that <laughs> optimum <laughs> little bit just before when the estrogen's really high. That you, is true. You, you mentioned about uh, about missing periods and it's not something I've dealt with, it's something that you've mentioned. Yeah. But coming to you, Kiara, what, what are the common, I, I guess, side effects or... or, or complications uh, we talked about endometriosis we talked about missing a period why would you miss a period because of hormonal imbalances or if there is an intake of energy that's less than expenditure so we see this in athletes okay where there is a shutdown because the body's under stress okay and body cannot cannot get pregnant because it's too much to, it's too much of a, a, a at all to get pregnant, right? So there's a shutdown. But your body the decides that you're protecting you, you. No. Yeah. So we see this in athletes, and, and even you know who, who are training marathon <laughs> runners and not eating enough, maybe. And 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 there's a there's a new word for it, reds. Reds. Yeah. Redes. Yes. So it reduced expenditure, reduced energy. I'm not exactly sure what it stands for, but it's, it's I know a, it's, it's an a recent athlete one. Yes, and a recent not athlete having a period. Yep. And, mm -hmm. So that is that I see, um, or with uh, anorexics, mm -hmm. more more commonly with PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome. So that's a hormonal Oh, say that again for me really slowly. PCOS, yeah. polycystic ovarian syndrome. Which is what? Which is when there is um, a 
polycystic ovaries, so ovaries that have got many tiny cysts, and they release hormones in an irregular fashion. So these ladies don't have periods every 28 days, but could be 30 days and could be 40, and then next month they miss it, and 60 days and it's back to 28. So this is a very irregular cycle. And typically these young girls are more on the heavier side, and they also could have a problem with excessive facial hair or hair in, hair in the like a male pattern. So on the chest, uh, underneath the belly button, and uh, and but this is not this is not because of the woman's makeup. This is because she has cysts. PCOS. So, P- so this is a symptom of a- PCOS is a syndrome. Okay, right. the S stands for syndrome. And to diagnose PCOS, no blood tests. Okay, it you need to have two out of three. One is ovaries that have got polycysts, um, lots of tiny cysts on them, so polycystic ovaries, and that's an ultrasound diagnosis. Two is irregular cycles. And the third one is excessive facial hair, so hirsutism, that's a fancy word for it. So if you have two out of three, you have PCOS. And it's a metabolic condition, okay? And that means it's associated with other things, with messed up carbohydrate metabolism, with insulin resistance, and later on with cardiovascular issues. Yeah. Common? Common? <laughs> yes. About. I'm guessing that's um, a yes. <laughs> um, yes. I think I, I like to say that half of Maltese women have it and half of the other half oh, wow. don't think, don't, don't know that they've got it. <laughs> It's super common. It's um, statistics are about thirty percent, and more common in Mediterranean and, and Asian areas. Yeah. Let me get this right. Thirty percent of women PCOS potentially listening to this podcast have PCOS that may be undiagnosed. It's higher, statistically higher in Mediterranean women and, and Asian, yes, and South Asian. So, okay. So Indian, yeah. And that these symptoms could be irregular cycles, regular cycles is, is the... weight gain, facial hair, these sorts yes, of things. Yes, yes. Is there a lasting damage? If someone has it and they don't get it diagnosed, is yes. there lasting damage? Yes, yes. Because um, it's all fun if you don't get periods, right? But if the lining is not shed, that lining thickens, it becomes abnormal. And abnormal cells in the lining have a potential to become cancerous. So we've got a safety limit of three months. So it's important to have, if you're not under hormonal control, it's important to have a period every three months. So with that 15-year-old who doesn't have periods and she's enjoying summer, but she's actually got PCOS and she's not telling her mum because maybe she's not on comfortable speaking terms with her mum. Yeah, absolutely. So That's this is one important. in three. Yeah. And this is regardless of age? Regardless of age. So obviously um, until menopause. Yeah, with periods. And then after menopause, there are other effects because these women are heavier, they have more estrogen, and they also are at a higher risk of cancer of the uterus and cardiovascular issues. So there are long-term risks with PCOS. And in all fairness, women who come to me with irregular cycles, they all suspect that they've got PCOS. And then when I diagnose it, they're like, yeah, that makes sense. And now how do I deal with this? I'm going to keep reverting back to you, Rebecca. Did you know about this? Uh, I heard about it. Yeah, me Now too. I'm thinking maybe. Like, honestly, um, uh, growing up, um, uh, as we had spoken about earlier, I had the most irregular cycle. <laughs> honestly, like, it just lit up a whole room for me, like, full of questions now. Like, rethinking everything that I went through, honestly, through what you have explained. Because now I'm just second guessing myself. Was that normal? Was it, uh, you know, <laughs> like it's not something that is so easy. You know what I mean? Because when I was growing up, as I told you, it's not something that I was really educated that much about. It's the same like like what we were talking about before. Well, hush, hush. Now whatever, like all that you said, is just it just made me question a lot of things like that happened to me in the past. Absolutely. And so, so let's come back to you, Chiara, for a second. We've talked about endometriosis, PCOS. Yes. Anything else that we need to... You mentioned fibroids. Periods, yeah. So fibroids are uh, like um, knots of muscle. They're solid, benign tumours. Common. Um, How common? One, so 25% of uh, Caucasian women and 30% of dark skins. Yes. And again, this runs in families. So if you, if a patient 
has got them, then chances are the the females and the, and the family will have them. Yes, yes. Twenty five percent. There's one in four women Correct. are going to have fibroids. Correct. I've and never heard of fibroid. I mean, I've heard the word like I've yeah. heard the word used, but I w- couldn't even tell you what the explanation was. Fibroids are benign. Okay, um, but the symptoms are heavier periods, and we don't tend to touch them. We don't remove them unless they give symptoms. So symptoms could be either heavy periods or pressure pain. So the fibroid grows and it's pressing on the bladder and it's giving urgency symptoms. So the woman needs to go to the toilet quickly or it's pressing on the bowel and is giving that urgency to go and poop because we used that word earlier. Um, so then we do something about it. Okay. Um, and there are various treatments. There's, um, there's medical treatment, um, tablets, Okay, that uh, are known to shrink the fibroids or stop them from growing. And uh, we've got some herbal supplements that can do that. Um, And then we've got surgical treatment. And surgical treatment would include cutting that fibroid out. And usually we tend to leave those uh, for those women who want to preserve their uterus, want to preserve their fertility. So a young lady, 25 year old and diagnosed with fibroids, right, let's she wants to get pregnant that's the point if this is going to interfere if it's in the cavity if that's going to interfere with the implantation of the fertilized egg or the growth of the pregnancy then we tend to take the risk of surgery but later on um, especially if there's more than one fibroid we try we try surgically to touch them because they bleed they bleed they have got chunky vessels there is also risk of hysterectomy so we need so that's removal, surgical removal yeah. of the uterus, right? So we choose our patients. We choose our patients, and fibroids are common. So yeah. Okay, before we move on to, <laughs> <laughs> I told you need wow. more shows. That's Absolutely. a lot of information. <laughs> okay. Anything else that we as women that are, let's let's leave the less common conditions for another show but anything else that's common that's like you know one in three one in four one in so five these are common yeah these are common yeah another condition that i do diagnose with scans is a p- pelvic congestion and yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love how we're exchanging we looks. Like, <laughs> what yeah. what is that so pelvic congestion um Apparently unheard of in Malta. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is when there's chunky vessels, chunky blood vessels um, on either side of the uterus. And I like to describe it as, um, you know, people with varicose veins, complain yeah, yeah. of dragging, that kind of pain. And it's very similar pain during periods. And this kind of pain, I don't know if you agree, Audrey, um, but from this is anecdotal now from what i see from my patients um the pain is uh, referred from hips to knees okay so if someone tells me that during their periods like oh so i am at why and i can't feel my legs it's like from the hip to the knee right like hmm. and i go in and i see the chunky vessels and it's pelvic congestion but the treatment is easy the treatment is taking painkillers and it's life-changing Sorry, sorry. <laughs> back, back in the room. We're just taking it yeah, all I in. Am, like, I am because I, I, exactly because we keep looking at each other and, yeah. I, and you're describing things that I can relate to. And, and how common is that? Less common than okay. PCOS and fibroids. So I think the last one that I want to ask you about is ovarian cysts. Is that the same as PCOS? Because no. Sasha well, had a, an ovarian cyst that ended up when it was removed. It was 31 centimeters long and all the way up her spine. Um, as you well know. Well, I removed one that was 26 kilos when I was in Wales. <gasps> and it's on the Daily Mail. Can I say that? <laughs> it's on the Daily Mail. <laughs> We've got a celebrity the in the room. <laughs> the, but the patient... The patient obviously sold the, the the story to the Daily Mail. And there's this photo of me wheeling out this massive cyst, 26 kilos, because then they, at the laboratory. No, how they, big they, is oh that? Oh, my God. Big. Uh, are, you, are we talking this big, this big? 26 kilos. This is like 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 she like lost a lot of weight. I am Insane. so going to go. Everybody, we need to be Googling this 26 <laughs> kilo cyst removed by Chiara. <laughs> Okay, so ovarian cysts. So ovarian cysts are cysts that grow on ovaries, right? That's what that means. Um, ovaries are constantly active. So making cysts is not unusual. Polycystic are tiny, tiny cysts. So they're millimeters, tiny millimeters. But when 
there is a cyst bigger uh, more than five centimeters we tend to keep an eye on it more than seven centimeters we tend to remove okay because more than seven centimeters is not going to go away on its own especially if it's solid if it's l fluid if it's a simple cyst we call it simple cyst that might go pop and that's painful for about three days but that's not related to periods so that's pelvic pain it's not related to periods but but yes ovaries can make cysts and how <laughs> common is ovarian cysts it's common yes it's common and statistically common is more than 10 percent. so yes it's common okay yeah Seguendo la strada sommersa di fronte all'isola di Mozia, superando le storiche saline all'interno della riserva orientata dello stagnone di Marsala, dove il vento anima e trasporta, ti troverai tra distese di vigneti e misteriose tracce di antiche civiltà, luoghi in cui la luce domina il tempo caricando di calore e di colore la natura e gli uomini. Gli uomini, i nostri uomini. Ci siamo chiesti cosa rendesse davvero speciale tutto questo. In una parola, il carattere. Il carattere di una terra amata e combattuta. Il carattere di chi lavora in vigna e in cantina. Il carattere della famiglia. Il carattere di un frutto. E tutto questo è frutto del nostro carattere. Okay, so we've, we've talked about that and I think sometimes we as women can be our own worst enemy because, you know, maybe there's part of us that don't want to know. Because if there may, needs to be medical intervention, then, you know, maybe that's going to put us off. But what should we be doing? What can we be doing or what do we need to do to maintain the healthy part of our body that's down there doing all of these amazing things and is obviously very susceptible to complications is there something i mean is there something physically we can be doing or something i would say first of all be aware of what your body normally does i mentioned it before then apart from that making sure you exercise i know we say all these things you get enough sleep you get enough decent nutrition these all play into hormone imbalances so, so when your hormones are imbalanced many times they it some things can be rectified by having enough sleep because we know when you don't sleep enough, your cortisol levels go up. And your, that, your what levels? It's, a, it's one of the hormones. Okay. One of the stress hormones. Okay. And uh, if, that, <laughs> if that goes up, <laughs> then We're just going, We're just <laughs> everything else oh starts God. to unbalance. So, yes. you know, decent sleep. Self-care. Self-care, stress management. Oh, yeah. I think we try to do so many things where, you know, we're constantly from one thing to another, ta taking but, time okay, out. So, so I'm going to ask you then, I mean, maybe this is where you're coming to, but those are very generic self-care instructions. Good sleep, uh, you know, looking after yourself, exercise, these sorts of things. Yeah, we should all be doing that for a million reasons uh, and not just because we, we're looking out for our womb. Um, is there anything more, because I think that's fantastic advice, And I, I do, but is there anything more specific that we need to be thinking about in context of women? Because I'm thinking about, obviously, 
Chiara's going to jump in there in a second, but also I'm thinking about what you're doing with your pelvic floor. And I want to come back to your, well, not your, but the pelvic floor in a second. One thing I would, sorry, I interrupted you, but one thing I would definitely say is make sure that you're not constipated. So many women are constipated. And when you actually go to the bathroom, you're removing these excess hormones. So that is whoa, another whoa, whoa, thing. Whoa. Hormones are in your poo. The, the extra hormones that your body doesn't need anymore are one of the things that get re are removed. When you go to the toilet. <laughs> so when you don't go to oh, the sorry, toilet like enough. After, after every note that is passed, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm with so you. Good. Okay. So, so when you hey. don't go to the hot toilet enough, and a lot of women don't go to the toilet what enough. What is enough? Okay. Because I'm going to say, look, how often do you have I to I would poop? say is once a day, even up to three times a day. The maximum you can go without going to the toilet is once every three days. Wow. I so at once. least you have to have a decent bowel movement three times a week to get rid of everything that needs to be gotten rid of. Okay. Waste. Waste. Exactly. Our body, but, but, our but, body doesn't need it. No. I mean, that's, I mean, that's without, without question. That's why you poop and you get it all out. But I, the very fact that you're saying that your hormones are in it and, and that, that affects the health of your your womb and everything, all your mechanical stuff that goes down there. And, and essentially, I love this word, pelvic floor. So I'm, I'm assuming it affects your pelvic floor as well. It definitely if you're does. Not pooping. If your pelvic, if your show. bowels are full, then your pelvic floor is going to feel a bit more uncomfortable. And then you might have those irregular periods and your uterus is a bit more congested. And, you know, it, it contributes to that feeling of discomfort. And prolapses. And prolapses. But that's not to do with periods. No, we didn't mention those. <laughs> <laughs> that's another problem. I, I really think Kara is like looking at myself and yourself and just saying, can we actually blow these women away anymore? Or should we just go <laughs> exactly. easy on them? Should we just let, oh, you know, God. let them? But you were about to jump in. We yes. were talking about health Absolutely. and Because I health. think awareness and what you're doing here, this is bringing it out to the people. Because awareness is super important. Getting, tracking all the periods, the, the feelings that you get during your cycle. There's apps for that. Yeah. And there's apps that teach you, ah, oh, this is why you're feeling like this is where you're at your best. So there are apps out there, right? So this is awareness. But there are certain things you cannot change. So if it's your genetics to have PCOS, you cannot change that. If it's your genetics to have fibroids, you cannot change that. But awareness... And also the fact that it's okay to go to the gynae. You don't need to be 25, have sex for the first time, or needing contraception to go to the gynae. If there is a mother who's got her 16-year-old who is having painful periods, having been through all of that herself, it's okay to come to the gynae. It's okay. We might not need to do an ultrasound, but from her symptoms, from the story, I can see what, where this is heading. And then we can discuss management because if the mum has gone through that, she doesn't want the child to go through this. So awareness. I'm going to ask both of you ladies and I'm going to come to Rebecca on this one because I'm going to be brutally, brutally, brutally honest. Um, I'm at my grand old age and I've just had my second smear test. And one of the reasons I've only had two smear tests in my life is because I am have been really quite terrified of, of smear tests. And, and I don't blame you. They are not pleasant and they're super, Agreed. super not pleasant, um, but they are necessary. But can I just say that you can say whatever you want. They should not be painful. Agreed. I didn't necessarily say that they were painful, okay, but, but they are unpleasant. Yeah, oh, well, who's enjoying getting a smear test done? <laughs> <laughs> because it's sorry. a Friday afternoon, I know what I'll do. <laughs> well, yeah, nobody enjoys going for a smear test. Nobody enjoys that, but it, they shouldn't be painful. Okay, they should that's be really... So, so if you are okay. having a smear test and it's it's painful, you need to tell your gynae. Of course. Okay, which leads me on to the question of... It, it goes back to... And I've, this is the most quote, quoted show ever. The first show we had on menopause, Mariella de Mech said, why don't... When I said, why don't we find out more about menopause? Why do we not um, know more about it? And she said, because we're women and we just get on with it. Now that puts in context of exa exactly what we're discussing at this table is that you 
you ladies have blown our minds away. It doesn't apply to me anymore. I'm out of that sort of phase of my life. I've got new and wondrous challenges, which are the menopause, but this is blowing my mind away. It really, really is. And I think for a lot of people that are, are, are kind of watching or listening to the show, it's, it's surprising for them too. If that's the case, explain to me, why are we just accepting painful periods? Why don't we question, should we always go to the gynae? Should we go to the gynae? Should we come and, and, and speak to you or to yourself every time that there's a, you know, a, a painful period? Where's the benchmark? What yeah. do we accept? And what do we say, no, we have to do something about? Why suffer though? Why suffer? Everyone's got their own different thresholds, obviously. Yeah. But if something's bothering you, go, go check it out. It might be nothing, but it's subjective. So if it's a, this is what I say, if it's a problem for you, then it is a problem. If it's not a problem, because I get women who have heavy periods, passing clots, big <sighs> chunks of blood, and no, 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 it's okay, it's not a problem. Okay, if it's not a problem, but I can give you treatment. No, 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 it's okay, it's not a problem. Okay, fine. It's not a problem, but I'll do the blood test to make sure that they're not losing enough blood to make them anemic and also check a thyroid test because abnormal thyroid can also cause havoc with periods right see there you go oh i did God. it again <laughs> i feel like every two minutes we're like blown away by a new fact here you go <laughs> but this is this is having like a holistic you know look at the patient so i'm not gonna look at the vagina on its own or the uterus on its own Hi. <laughs> Sorry, what I do We're just that processing again? everything that's been going. Oh my god! But but then I don't think necessarily. You know, my experience of gynecologists has been varied, and I think the fact that I was undiagnosed for endometriosis for twelve years kind of made me turn around and say, "Sort of, I'm not going to see a gynecologist again." Hence, not having had smear tests because I was so ticked off, so ticked off that I'd I'd been told I kept, you know, I had gas. Interesting thing enough is that you talked about the pelvic floor and you talked about. Um, and you talked about uh, the, the endometrial cells gluing things together. And then you talked about the pelvic floor being obstructed and, and what effect that has on your bowels. And suddenly I'm going, well, maybe it was gas. Maybe there was something that they saw that they could misdiagnose because it was endometriosis, which sounds to me like it's incredibly hard to actually get to the bottom of. And IBS Excuse and endometriosis go hand in hand. Right. Yeah. That explains. That ex Whoa. So that many explains symptoms. a lot. So many symptoms, even urgency, you know, not being able to hold your pee. That is another thing that you could easily get with endo. And we also, we laugh as we get older because we, as yes. ladies, sneeze. They and tend to cross accepted, their legs. <laughs> and it's accepted as normal. That is another thing. I often get ladies in the clinic going, oh, it doesn't bother me. It's only just a bit. But it's not normal. Don't accept it See, as normal. See, this is subjective again, isn't it? Yes. If it, I mean, if it's really not bothering you, okay, fine. But don't say it's normal because you had children or because you're menopausal or you're old. It's not normal. So if we find anything that we identify as not normal, as something that is not our normal journey through life as a woman, we should go and get it checked out. Yes, please. And are okay. we going to experience... All doctors, gynecologists who are going to be as open-minded. Because I think mm. maybe that's where some women have a stumbling block. Mm. Okay, you're not going to answer that one. And I don't, I don't, uh, but do you understand what I'm saying? I'm, I think... I work on my own in my own clinic, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the other um, But has that ever been a stumbling block for you, Rebecca? Have you ever said, I'm not going to go and see a gynecologist because I don't think they can do anything? I mean, to be honest... I've always been in that class of people where just get on with it and be like, okay, that's normal. Just keep on going. It's the truth. Like, honestly, I just felt like, okay, it's a part of everything that's going on. Get on with it. It's a bit of pain. It will last a couple of days. It's normal. Nope. I never said like, I need to go and uh, take further steps. Because in my opinion, that was my normal. You accepted it. Yeah, I accepted it. You went to a doctor. So you accepted it, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I should say that I think we're moving towards more open-mindedness. Yeah. 
I, I'm going to say I would completely concur with that because we've got a, a, a physiotherapist who is an expert with the pelvic floor. And I, as I said, I'd never even heard of that. And you, when we spoke, you talked about the, the benefits of physiotherapy on this particular area, you know, that is exactly. appropriate for women. And sometimes it's muscle weakness that is causing certain problems um, or muscles that are too tight. Again, could be due to endo, could be just because you've got muscles that don't know how to relax. So even your bowel movements, you can't go to the toilet because your muscles cannot relax enough for you to go. But uh, I, I do think that some people just get on with it because that's what they've always known. And they've never questioned whether it can improve. Super women. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to, we're going to bring this show to, to a close because I think this is a really perfect moment. But I am very, very much convinced that we need to do this again and I'm going to ask you ladies to come back and we will do this again because I really feel like we've just touched the the we the just scratched the surface of this topic <laughs> I'm going to ask each of you to to finish up um for you ladies I'd like a bit of a word of advice and I'm going to come to Rebecca in a second but starting with you Kiara your closing kind of thoughts for this show for any I was going to say for any woman who's having a period, we all experience this. And this is why I'm blown away. Even if we don't, if you don't experience the period, you should, you should also go and have it checked. But that's my point is that it, it's, it affects us all. So you're closing, your closing thoughts. I always say, don't be scared to speak up. You know, if it's bothering you, go and have it checked. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep on it. Just go. I agree. If you have any doubts, make sure you ask. I mean, help is out there. You will, you will find help, but you just have to look sometimes and track. Keep records of what is happening during your cycle, your bowels, your everything else. Because even this has an implication even for bone health. If your, if your estrogen isn't, isn't there or not in sufficient quantities, that is in the future. You wouldn't think of it now. You think of it much later on. Rebecca, I think our tolerance levels have been readjusted. Yeah. I, I'm profoundly blown away by these Same. amazing women saying, no, 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 it, it shouldn't hurt that much. It shouldn't. How has this show, uh, I mean, I'm not even, I'm past this, but I'm going to ask you, <laughs> how has this changed your thinking? I mean, honestly, it's just having me question everything because as I said, I've always been the accepting kind. I just said, okay, just get on with it. But now I realize that, you know, there may have been other things. And obviously, like, how long have we been here? Say 40 minutes, for example. Th this changed everything. Like, everything that I've known, added to it, nourished my knowledge. Like, I have a million questions now. Like, after we finish this, I'm just going to talk to you, lady. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> and it's all guy in your me. I know the way Kiara's looking at her watch going, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm in clinic. Make an appointment there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, not seriously, like so much information has been passed. You and I have been exchanging views like, what is this? Yeah. It's just insane. Whoa. Well, listen, I'm going to chin chin because I want to say thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca, for coming up with the idea. Thank <laughs> you to you ladies for coming and imparting wisdom. Um, and I'm uh, cheers to changing the way we think about something that affects every single woman. Thank you so much. Heck yes. Cheers. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. Holy cow.